Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel, Heir of Carthage here. It is the new year, but have you gotten your fix of Rome 2? And I believe the answer is probably no, at least from my channel. So I have failed you already this year, and <laughs> I apologize. I also apologize I didn't have a video out um, for the last couple of days? Was it two days? One day? I don't remember. I, I'm kind of getting used to being back in the office. I was out of the office for a couple of weeks and it's just taken me a minute to get back in the grind. And then of course I was making that video to cover the Warhammer Old World tabletop stuff that Games Workshop had sent me. But I feel like that's very appropriate content for this channel because it fits in with Total War Warhammer. But in any case, here we are in Rome 2 and I'm excited. This is another 4v4 from the good folks over at the Gathering Stone, which I do have linked in my description. So if you would like to play battles like this, go check out the Gathering Stone. So thanks to Soul for sending this one over. Um, this is going to be a 4v4 sub-commanders battle. And in this one, we're going to have the Iceni, Massilia, Nabatea, and Swaby facing off against Kush, Epirus, Dacia, or Gete, and Rome. I kind of interchange Dacia and Gete for those who are familiar with it. There is going to be some new stuff on the battlefield. It is a new year, and although Rome 2 isn't a new game, there are new units. How are there new units, you may ask? Well, you should be following the Unconquered Sun mod, and you should be playing these battles, the folks over at Gathering Stone, and then you can have fun with these new units as well. No, the Britain Slinger is not new. Not the Spear Van, but these gentlemen over here, if we want to call them gentlemen, um, are Mercenary Kerns, and these are going to be a nice addition to the Iceni roster, a javelin man with a little bit longer range, I think, than a standard javelin. I could be wrong, it's 100 meters. I, I don't know what the standard javelin range is, but it does not have the 41 missile damage, but it does have seven javelins, which is quite a few. And if you look at the melee stats here, really good melee stats, just not a lot of survivability. So the armor is low and the melee defense is low, but a cool unit for like late game um, attacks on light units uh, while being good in the early game with their javelins. So. Nice hybrid unit. Uh, we're going to see Epirus already facing off um, with the uh, Iceni here. There's Spear Band out meeting Militia Hoplites. Uh, a new unit for uh, the Gete here, Dacian Warrior, which is kind of a mid-tier heavy sword. And uh, this is going to be an interesting add to the, the Gete roster because they kind of went from like elite noble swords down to trash, and there wasn't a whole lot in between. So I, I like this add. Feels like a good roster stopgap for the Dacians. Um, there are some Sam Knights for Epirus, as well as some veteran Hoplites pushing up. There's a Druidic Noble General, which I believe is also an add to the Iceni. And that Druidic Noble's charging in, but it's coming in early into the face of all these Nubian archers and slingers from Epirus. And that Druidic Noble, they're going to get sent back to their pagan gods. It is not gonna be good for them. They don't have a lot of armor. And uh, I don't know if their block chance isn't great or what, but they are getting shredded by missiles. And then they get into combat in here with these heavy Samnite warriors. And those poor druids are not going to be long for this world. Um, so the Nabataeans move up some swordsmen and axe warriors to help fill in here. And there's quite a few of them. This is going to turn into a huge melee slog along this hillside. The players were kind of fighting over it. Um, while this has been going on, Rome has three Numidian cavalry that have been facing off against a couple of Tarentines and Germanic scout riders. The Suebi had a, um, what do you call it, a, a vanguard deployed force that was actually further back in their territory. This was Cambri bow women, and then there were some spears, uh, and one Wodenaz spear, and then uh, some uh, Bloodsworn. And they are coming in, they have a fast charge that's going to be cooked off here in just a minute. And they're going to come charging in to try and help in this melee that got started a lot earlier, probably, than we usually see melees here. And honestly, it's kind of a toss-up at the moment. Um, Nabatea is throwing in these armored hoplites along with their axe warriors and swords. Armored hoplites do have the elite hoplite spear. They get eight armor piercing, so they're pretty good. And then the axe warriors are going to get pretty good AP. Um, these mercenary axe warriors, a similar unit kind of thrown in there. If you look over here, another mercenary axe warrior coming in for the Gete. Armored Hoplites holding back Mercenary Sam Knights and Veteran Hoplites. Actually very similar units across the board there uh, fighting each other. And those Mercenary Kerns are kind of over here harassing and throwing their javelins around into this flank. Um, so pretty cool units. And here's that fast charge from the Suebi. Nice job falling back here by the, uh, the Kushites and letting the Militia Hoplites take that charge. And then they're going to counter it with some Mercenary Axe Warriors once that charge has been blunted. So uh, I think a pretty, pretty good 
answer to the fast charge there, though the Swaby aren't done. The Bloodsworn sees this opportunity to just kind of continue that fast charge. It's going to last for just a little bit longer, and they're going to come hit these Leopard Warriors. Um, should get a decent discharge there and be able to do some damage. The Cambry Bowwomen are back here looking for some targets as well. It looks like maybe those Falksmen, which of course don't really have any missile protection, so that's a pretty good choice. Now, as far as cavalry goes, there is a lot of greco gallic I say a lot. There's two greco gallic cav mixed in, or sorry, three of them. Am I wrong? Yeah, three of them, and they're mixed in with some citizen cavalry and Massilian cavalry where the general's at. Um, and then there is a noble cav or noble rider, and then there is a Nabataean noble cavalry here as well as this uh, Massilian cab that just busted through the back line. It's going to go for those slingers. Not a bad idea, but these Tarantines are near, and that unit probably won't last long. It's just a medium melee cavalry. Now, as we take a look at the melee, I don't see a real clear winner at the moment. Ooh, that's a big deal. These noble swords, oh my gosh. They've only lost four entities, and they've got 150 kills? That's almost a... Holy cow, what is that, like a 40 to 1 kill ratio? <laughs> Good night. Wow. So these uh, noble swords are showing who really is noble, and it's certainly not these Nabataean swordsmen at the moment. They are getting crapped on by the noble swords. We will watch that unit with great interest, as Palpatine would say. Um, so here we go. We're going to have some greco gallic cavalry moving forward to help intercept these mercenary axe warriors. It is a pretty good call. It would do well. There's a Falksman nearby. they got to watch out. I think those guys have a little bit of bonus versus large. They're not very well defensible against charge, but if they get in there after one, they're actually pretty good against cavalry. Looks like a, maybe, maybe a little bit of an advantage for the home team in this very vicinity for the melee, but it's definitely an advantage for the red team over here. On this side, these Nabataean Axe Warriors are not going to last much longer back here behind enemy lines. That Wodenas Spear, though, doing a good job. It's racked up 200 kills. Wow. Wodenas Spear also has the, um, I believe uh, they have uh, an Elite Spear. No, it doesn't do as much AP as the Hoplite Spear, but it is a 30 damage spear, which for a spear is high damage. So, that Nabataean Noble Cavalry looks like it may make a run for the back lines back here. Those... Mercenary Kerns still throwing their javelins, and right now they're targeting the Noble Swords, which is a good idea. That Noble Sword has 200 kills and had only just now lost its 10th entity. So those Kerns are trying to even the score, but it's going to take a lot of javelins to even the score. But, I mean, those were some good ones coming into the flank there for a moment. It was hitting the unshielded and rear flank. Now they're headed towards them into another blob of infantry, and these guys are looking to pad their stats further. The Kerns are going to fall back a little bit. Yeah, oh yeah, look at this. That Nabataean Noble Cavalry crushed one slinger. It's headed for another. It probably really wants these juicy targets over here, which is the um, Royal Kushite Archers and Nubian Bows. I think those would be the best targets. But if those bows turn on the horsemen, it's not going to be good. This is some high damage archery over here. And it is going to mulch cavalry units um, pretty quickly. And in fact, it looks like that's what's happening. The archers are turning this way. Probably when it, yeah, they get a shot off. And, ooh, there comes one from the Nubian Bows and the Royal Archers. That Royal Archer's really going to hurt. Sure enough, that Noble Cavalry starts to drop very quickly. Ten entities real quick right there. And then probably a few more. They're going to drop there. Let's see whether Rome and Massilia have decided that cavalry fight. Not so much. Tarantine Cavalry in here holding. If they were to get that greco Gallic cabin, they would actually do well once those units have been held. But they're watching out for that Militia Hoplite, which is a good idea. Over here, a greco gallic Cavalry actually holding in there quite well with that Saki Equitate. Not so great with that Bodyguard coming in. And it uh, looks like the infantry fight actually really turned out in favor of the red team. I think that the, uh, the Dacian Warriors and the Noble Swords here ended up making the difference. Uh, those are some nice units. And boy, they got a lot of kills between the two of them. Um, yeah, geez, it's almost 400 kills between those two units. And Rome is gonna lose this cavalry engagement I feel like if they stay back here too much longer because that noble rider along with the Massilian cav and the greco gallic cav it's not gonna go well for Rome back here there's still quite a lot of cavalry for the home team and it looks like that the red team is moving to reform like retreat and reform I think that's a good idea I think that's a definitely a good idea for both teams to kind of regroup and, and rethink their lives here uh, that Nabataean noble cavalry what's left of it is back here keep an eye on that I'm gonna fast forward 
we'll see kind of how these teams go to work. They may make for this hill over here if they can make it there. And I think they can because this team opted to not chase them aggressively. So I'm going to fast forward. It's like the Kushite archers spread way out here to the other flank. But they're all moving towards the hill now. And they sh I mean, these units could charge hard at them, but there is a little bit of defense, and that'd be risky, so I don't think they want to go all in, but, I mean, that would have been a beautiful kill here for these greco Gallic cavalry, but there is a decent bit of defense in the area between the Nubian spears, these other bows, so that, that would have been quite risky. Uh, we're going to find out how much ammo people have left. Um, there are some more mercenary kerns left, I think two of those. Uh, Britain Slingers, the Kerns are out of ammo, if I remember right. The Britain Slingers have a little bit, and the Cambry Bow Women have a little bit. And then these uh, Nubian Bows and Royal Kushite Archers also have a little bit of ammunition. So um, it's it's not going to go a long ways. The hill position obviously looking really good for the red team here. They are using this um, ability here that's making them like increase their defense, making them unbreakable. I'm assuming they're going to want to rest their units to some degree. And we do have a push going on over yeah! here. This noble cavalry is kind of out ahead of itself. Those archers. Oh, there's a focus fire. Oh, it's going to be bad if those archers get a shot on that noble rider. Oh, and they do. Ouch. Look at that. 14 entities. Ooh. Yeah, that hurts. Archers are very dangerous to those cavalry units. It is, it is tricky sometimes. You'll think you're in a good position and then they just catch you unawares. This Dacian warrior down here, or sorry, no, it wasn't a Dacian warrior. They've got a Tarantine cavalry, and it was some kind of spear unit, and they got isolated and killed. The Dacian warrior is still on top of the hill, has a lot of entities. The Noble Sword is taking some fire from the Cambry Bow Women, but it's gone into a shield screen or a shield wall here. That's going to increase missile block chance, amongst other things. So they are going to be a, a pretty tough target there. The bows don't do a lot of armor piercing damage. Yeah, that, that Dacian warrior is trying to move up into a shield uh, formation there as well to try and eat up ammunition. This is going to be a close finish. It says it's pretty even, and I agree it is pretty even. I think it's really going to be a matter of can the home team do something about these archers before the archers on the hill shred them? How much ammo do they have? I don't know. This Dacian warrior and that noble sword are a huge threat to the home team. greco Gallic cavalry, along with another unit... Combining could do some nice AP damage to these units, but it's going to have to be done right. Um, and there's not a lot of infantry here for the home team to fix these guys. They do have those Kerns, though. Maybe the Kerns could fix some of these units in formation and then let the uh, the greco Gallic Cavalry get in to try and do some of that um, extra damage. There's a couple of uh, Nabataean infantry left to help with that as well. Ooh, Massilian Cavalry moved inside a range of those Royal Archers, and they let them have it. And here comes another volley right behind it. Looks like they're going to leave, too. That was another focus fire situation. Oh, yikes. Those guys are killing so many horses with those volleys, so not a good time for the Massilian cavalry. Man, even those long-range ones still connected on a couple. So they're being kept at a distance really quite effectively, and it looks like the red team sees an opportunity here to, to single out the Suebi and try and destroy them, and I don't know... Yeah, the Swabier is turning their cavalry around. They really don't have a way to avoid this. They can either take the charge in the back or they can die fighting. And it looks like they're just going to die fighting over here. There's really... The nearest reinforcements will be that greco Gallic cavalry, but if it comes across there, it's going to get shot to death by those archers. Meanwhile, the Dacian warriors come charging downhill. Could get fixed by this infantry right here, and if we saw a combined cav of the two greco Gallic cavalry and the infantry into that Dacian warrior, it, they could KO this unit really quick. But that other unit's not coming over to assist. It's continuing the fight up here at the hill against the Noble Sword. Which makes sense. The Noble Sword needs to die too. But their attention is split. And that Dacian Warrior is holding firm here. It is holding firm. It's got this Relentless, which is in fact increasing. It's, oh, it goes to red. Oh, they're going to leave before its morale just went red. But the cavalry pulls out. And over here, the Swaby got rolled up with that Massilian unit. I feel like the red team has the advantage at this point. I don't know, though. There's still a fair bit of cavalry left for the home team, but the fact that this Dacian warrior is not going to get KO'd, it's going to win this fight now. Especially since these Nabataeans are pulling out and trying to go the other direction as well. Yeah, that Dacian warrior is not just going to win that fight. It's going to own that fight. They've hardly lost any entities there. I think they maybe like 15 or 20. Eh, no, it looks like about 20 entities since earlier, but they had over 100 to begin with. 
when that fight got going. This definitely looks like it's going to swing to the red team at this point. The Greco-Gallic Cavalry has a decent charge and, again, decent AP. There's just not a lot of support left. And, like, crushing that Noble Sword is going to be really hard. I mean, if, if you pincered it between the two Greco-Gallic Cavalry, maybe. But even still, it's going to be hard to break the morale of those uh, Nobles and to break their armor. It's like they're going to make a fight of it. It's even back out here. But I still think this is probably in the hands of the red team because this leopard warrior is headed back and there's really no good answer to that and this Dacian warrior down here is going to survive as well. Survive and thrive. It's almost up to 150 kills. A little bit of shots there from the uh, Britain slingers. Noble swords down to 16 but still a dangerous fighting force at this point in the game. Looks like it's going to be a bit of a downhill charge into the leopard warriors just trying to dish them some damage. I mean, that probably makes sense to make that charge quickly because they weren't braced, and it did get some kills. This is a, uh, I think this is a bad situation for the home team. It was a very close fight. It's not quite over yet, but I'm pretty sure it's over for the home team. But a very, very close fight, yeah. See, those Dacian warriors are just going to be impossible to dislodge at this point. And again, the Axe Cavalry can do decent against them for a short while. They just can't stand in a fight against them for too long. Yeah, this one's going to go to the red team, but hey, extremely well played on both sides. This was a close battle in the end and uh, a pretty epic slaughter across the battlefield here. Not a whole lot left from either side. A costly enemy victory. And let's take a look at the stats here. Sol Invictus leading the Swaby Cavalry. So he was player three, or sorry, player four, it looks like, for the home team. Um, so play in player four position with Soul with the Swaby. Um, good work with that Noble Rider. Got a lot of kills. Kimbri Bowwomen did some pretty good killing and then some nice kills here as well on the Woden Uh Marcus Decimus, it looks like his key units were the Nabataean Noble Cavalry. That's the one that got back into those Slingers. Um, some decent kills on those Armored Hoplites as well. And then uh, a pretty good performance out of those two Swordsmen. Mr. Bombastic with the Iceni. If we take a look at those Kerns, um, holy cow, this one got 232 kills. I think a lot of those came in melee. I didn't get a lot of zoom-ins on these guys late, but it, with that melee capability, they would have been able to do that. The poor Druidic nobles rest in pepperonis. And then we had the Vortigant Sauce here, but the cool Massilian Cavalry Corps did pretty well with some of those Greco-Gallic Cavalry. Um, and then uh, Magnus here with Epirus. Looks like his veteran Hoplites picked up 116. One of the Samnites Chevrons, so those must have been some fairly valuable kills. Nice job. Uh, this is player four for the other team, so nice skirmishing component. Militia hoplites are great, like a holding force, a little bit of missile shield, cavalry shield, that kind of stuff. Number, holy cow, 405 kills with the noble swords. That is utterly insane. The Dacian warriors both doing quite well. Uh, even this one that got dumpstered, quote unquote, didn't pick up a chevron, still picked up 109 kills before it got knocked off the battlefield. Uh, nice job with those falcsmen as well. Uh, Hiker Beck here with the Kush. Uh, nice work with those Royal Kushite Archers. A lot of those were very valuable kills, which is why you see the, the two chevrons there. A lot of cavalry kills. This Leopard Warrior also picking up a double chevron at 186 kills. So some nice work there. Hannibal's Air working the Roman Cavalry here. Um, you may not see the big numbers here on the kills, but I honestly thought Hannibal's Air did a good job. Didn't win that cavalry fight, but at least made it messy enough that the other team wasn't able to finish the fight with their cavalry. And sometimes. That's what you need to do to win. So good job to all players. Thank you for sending this over, Soul. If you want to join these folks, I highly recommend it. I'm going to be playing some more with them soon, so keep an eye out for it. Air of Carthage, signing out for now.